Why do siblings look different? Identical twins only make up about one in every 250 births, and other than that, identical siblings are basically unheard of. On average, you only share about 50% of your DNA with any given sibling, and the DNA you do share can vary from sibling to sibling. But you come from the same parents, so why don't you have the same DNA? What causes genetic diversity in children? Well, to understand why you and your sibling's DNA is different, you first have to understand a bit about the DNA itself. At certain points in a cell's life cycle, the DNA will condense into pieces of genetic material called chromosomes. You have 46 chromosomes, 23 from your mother and 23 from your father. For every chromosome you receive from your mother, you have one of the same kind of chromosome from your father. These two chromosomes are homologous, meaning that they code for the same traits, as in both may have a gene coding for eye color. However, how these chromosomes code for that trait may be different, as in one could code for blue eyes and the other for brown. When you pass on DNA to your children, you too will give 23 chromosomes to your child, one chromosome from each homologous pair. Which chromosome you pass on from the pair is completely random. This is called genetic recombination, sometimes referred to as the genetic lottery, and is the main reason behind genetic diversity in children. But how does the genetic lottery happen? The answer lies in meiosis, the division of sex cells. For the sake of simplicity, I will be demonstrating meiosis with only six chromosomes. Prior to entering meiosis, the cell has replicated its DNA, forming double-stranded chromosomes. Since the end goal for sex cells is 23 chromosomes, rather than the normal 46, this means the cell must divide twice. In the first stage of meiosis, prophase 1, homologous chromosomes find and pair up with each other to form tetrads. In the next stage, metaphase 1, the tetrads line up along the equator of the cell, and in anaphase 1, the tetrads are pulled apart so one double-stranded chromosome from each pair ends up in each new cell. From there, the two new cells repeat this process, separating the double-stranded chromosomes in a div second division to form the final sex cells, called gametes. Now let's take a look at m closer look at metaphase 1. This is where the genetic lottery takes place. It's completely random which side your maternal and paternal chromosomes end up on. So while the example I may have shown you looked like this, metaphase 1 could have just as easily looked like this, this, or this. Each of these small changes result in dramatically different sex cells. Now imagine this with 46 chromosomes. The odds of giving the exact same set of 23 random chromosomes to two of your children is nearly non-existent. And to produce two identical children, this would, happen, this would have to happen with both parents, making the chances even slimmer. It would be like flipping 46 coins and each coin landing on the same side when you flip them a second time. Keep in mind that this does not apply to identical twins, as they are caused by a phenomenon where an embryo splits after fertilization. But if it's nearly impossible to produce identical children, why do siblings look so similar? It's important to note that when it comes down to individual genes, it's really only a 50-50 chance that you share that chromosome with that gene with your sibling. This means that with any given sibling, you share an average of 23 chromosomes, a mix from both parents. It's only when we talk about large quantities of chromosomes that the statistics start to get improbable.